I'm live. Yay, beach dead. Good morning, folks. Ken Hoven here in the crew at Dinosaur Land in Lenox, Alabama, November 22nd. Famous day in history. Does anybody know what happened on this day? Think hard. Now, you older folks, come on now. I was in fifth grade. I remember it well. John F. Kennedy was shot. Yeah. Okay, we're the folks who believe the Bible is true, and the evolution theory is the dumbest religion in the world. God made everything in six days, including dinosaurs. John F. Kennedy shot today. A uh, single gene was isolated in 1969, the year I got saved. Hmm. And uh, Angela Merkel became the first female chancellor of Germany, and who cares, okay? For Adventureland, we think God's word is true, and he ought to be glorified for his creation. So everything we do here has something to give God the glory for what he created. Let's see. We have all kinds of activities in our science center and our uh, uh, cafeteria even. It's a lot of fun in there with the cooking. Freddie's amazing. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, the dinosaurs, the stars, and everything. I added that. In six days. Couldn't be more clear. Said it again in Exodus 31. Timothy, Paul wrote to Timothy and said, From a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. The scriptures tell us how to be saved. We'll be talking about that this morning, a very important topic. All scriptures given by God, inspired. God breathed his words into that book. People send me the strangest things, brother. I got one in the mail, email. Brother Hovind, what do you think? I'm talking about people wearing masks, you know. Look at that idiot pulling all of us in danger. Because of people like that, we'll never be safe. You got one bird flying around free. <laughs> I love it. Okay, you can forget about COVID. It's the stupid, dangerous religion of evolution. That's the danger. Get our series, creation seminar series, 50 bucks for the whole thing. And give it to anybody you know in public school. It'll change their life. Okay, let's see. I made a comment about the earth speeding up. Can you give me that globe? Where did it go, brother? Oh, I can't read. Never mind. Can you get it? Okay. Well. The globe. All right. You don't want to show Will on camera? Yay. <laughs> I made a comment about the earth speeding up during the flood because of the contraction of the masses. If the water was under the crust and it moved on top of the crust, the crust would sink in a few feet, speeding the earth up like a spinning, like a sk ice skater spinning. Somebody wrote and texted Carl said, uh, Hoven, you believe the earth is speeding up? It's measurably slowing down. Overall, earth spin has slowed six hours in the last 2740 years this was shown by a report at the royal society blah 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 i said carl or no carl i said i believe it sped up one time when the crust of the earth sank in to the void created when the water came from under the crust to the surface of the flood for the flood the mass was simply readjusted since rock is more dense than water concentrating the mass of any spinning object will speed it up ask any skater or diver tuck tight to spin fast Earth has always been generally slowing down due to lunar drag, tidal friction, internal friction with the magma under the crust, as well as a slight drag from the sun and even possibly, possibly even planets. This is perfectly logical, and it follows all the laws of conservation of angular momentum. The slowing also proves the Earth is years old. See my seminar, part one. I believe, this is not the topic today, when God first created the Earth, the Earth spun around 360 times exactly in one revolution around the sun. There were 360 days. 360 is an amazing number. 12 disciples times 3, the Trinity, times 10, gives us 360. 360 is the, the smallest number that will is divisible by every number from 1 to 10, except for 7. See, 6 is man's number. 7 is God's perfection. It'll divide by everything but 7. Interesting. Anyway, you can study 360 for a long time. So I think it's sped up because of the flood, and now it's 365.2422 days per and it is slowing down. I know. I say that. I've said it for decades. But it sped up once, Carl. Okay. We have nearly 140 acres here and about four miles of roads and rain, plus huge gardens and orchards for teaching creation. We need a bigger tractor. Our little John Deere just doesn't quite. How many times have we tried to even lift something? It wouldn't quite pick it up what we need. It's a great tractor, but it needs a bigger one, right? Who all drives that thing? Drive five, six, seven of you here. We're looking for a bigger 47 or 60 horse tractor. The owner of the Komoda dealer talked to me yesterday. He said, Brother Hovind, I'm getting one in trade Monday. Uh, he said, it's only got 100 hours on it. It's perfect for what you need out. He loves our ministry. And he said, I'm going to have 23,000 in it. If you want to raise the money, you can buy it. So if anybody out there wants to buy us a tractor, we need a bigger one. Joseph Stalin said, 
He who votes is not important. He who counts the votes is important. That's what we got going on. It's, it's interesting. I've been praying for weeks. Lord, expose the evil completely. The problem is we deserve God's judgment in this country. That's the problem. I'm asking for his mercy instead. Okay. Thank you for all who've helped with the new kitchen. It is getting close. The question is, can we make it for Thanksgiving? If not, how about Christmas? If not, how about next Thanksgiving? Have one comes around every year. Uh, there's the new kitchen outside of the dining hall. We want to get, we've invited, <laughs> we got all the old playground equipment going together. That dinosaur was all busted up. We got it for free. So they're putting zip ties in it to make it look like it's been in a battle and there's scars and he's sewed up at the doctor. That's going to be cool. Okay. We got the new gas tank. Laszlo, where did he go? Uh, not here. 500 gallon gas tank. All we need now is somebody to pay to fill it. Uh, no more five gallon buckets going to the store. That's going to be awesome. There's our playground. Your kids are going to, how many of you guys like playing on the playground? You guys live here and go nuts here, don't they? Great playground. Okay. Our giant swing is just about ready. Got to build the platform this week. The batting cage for slinging golf balls at Goliath with slings. And our super airplane launch site is really cool. Let's see, the Goff family, the only one I'm aware of. You guys visiting here from where? Rusk. From where? Rusk. Ruskin. Rusk. Rusk, Texas. Okay. Good to have you here. Hi, boys. So your one son is seven, right? Did he figure it out yet? I get them all confused. Come take the real tour at Dinosaur Adventureland. 135 baptized so far. God is good. We Now, some of his children drive me crazy, but God is good. Okay, let's see. Uh, is the parrot still here? Yeah. Okay. And the tile floor, guys, looking good. Real good. Bro, that's what you do is tile, right? Well, we ran out of money halfway through the tile, buying the tile. So it's going to be half tiled, the dining hall. <laughs> so, and our playground is really cool. Your kids will love that. Uh, okay. Let's see. We got a lot of fun stuff to do at Dinosaur Adventureland. Let me, oh, yeah. Where's yeah? Is that, uh, should I leave that picture up there for a while? Yeah. <laughs> You've been after her and after her. <laughs> Juliana, come marry this guy would you, so we can get some work out of him. Okay. <clears throat> we have new baby goats, uh, all kinds of stuff going on out there. The emus love us, the chickens, uh, all kinds of stuff to do at Dinosaur Adventureland. The pot belly pigs, the turkeys. Let's see. What, three new baby goats last week or two weeks ago? Yep. <clears throat> they can get up and run around first day. There they are. Okay, and our tortoise, Turbo. The uh, What is that picture in there for? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's Dinosaur Adventureland. Uh, you can help us stay open for free. You'll join our 777 club. <clears throat> okay, slide number 269, enter. There are all kinds of religions in the world. How many have ever been confused by just the simple fact that there's so many different religions? There's just a whole bunch of them. All of them think they're right. All of them think everybody else is wrong. This is standard, right? So who's right? I remember as a young Christian, I'd been raised Lutheran and Methodist and Mennonite. I'd visited about every kind of church there was. My parents were very ecumenical. I wanted to make sure we had a rounded education. Got to have this thing off, I think. Hey, got there. Okay. And so by the time I was 16, I was thoroughly confused. Somebody said, Kent, are you going to heaven? I said, I don't know. I've been baptized, catechized, circumcised, homogenized, pasteurized. No, what else do you got to do? And anyway, ended up leading me to the Lord, February 9, 1969. So which religion is right? We're studying the different ones. Why I'm not different religions, okay? <clears throat> I'll tell you what I am. I'm one who believes the there has to be a God to create the universe. That would mean he owns it. And I believe he wrote a book to tell us about himself. <clears throat> and I believe that book is the Bible. And I believe he preserved it in the King James even. I even go that far. And I'll be glad to defend that position if need be. Okay, so... I'm not an atheist. <clears throat> I'm not any of the Eastern religions. We went over those. I'm not a Mohammedan Muslim. I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I'm not a charismatic. I'm not a Sabbath keeper. I told why the last time. Now I'm going to talk about today <clears throat> why I don't believe baptism saves. Not in the atheist category, not in the non-Christian category, but in the Christian category, they split up into 400 flavors. But they can basically be boiled down to two groups, Cain and Abel. Those who name the name Christian <clears throat> fall into those two categories. Cain thought he could please God with his works. Look what I did for you, God. I brought fruit, vegetables, blah, blah, blah. God wouldn't take it. Abel brought a lamb. In the Christian, under the Christian category, actually all religions in the world can be put in those two categories. How do you approach God? Is it based on what you do or what a substitute did for you? 
That's the huge difference in Christianity. So, oh, wait a minute. Slide 1035, Alt D, no, no, Alt D, V. Slide number 1035. Okay. Is baptism part of salvation? How many have ever heard that idea before that you have to get baptized to get your sins washed away or to go to heaven? That baptism is part of salvation. The Church of Christ says, yes, it is. Catholics say, yes, it is. Orthodox, Lutheran, Anglican, Methodist, Episcopal say, yes, you've got to be baptized. The Bible says no. Kent says no. Well, let's talk about that. Church of Christ. How many have ever seen one of those? They drive around the Church of Christ. They're all over the place. Church of Christ meets here. There are 200, 2, 2 million members and 40,000 individual congregations worldwide. <clears throat> when did they start? Who was the founder of the Church of Christ? Well, they developed in the early 1800s, early 19th century, with a couple guys named Thomas Campbell and Alexander Campbell. And Peter Ruckman did a great book on that. Uh, where, where? Why I'm not a Campbell. Why I don't believe what the Campbellites believe. This religion, church, which developed into the Church of Christ, baptism saved, started in the mid or early 1800s. <clears throat> Campbellite. Church of Christ preachers teach that baptism is an essential part of salvation. The water washes away your sins. I have to strongly disagree. I do like their theme song, though. <clears throat> Church of Christ theme song. Water fellowship, water joy divine, leaning on the everlasting tub. That's how you get saved. Okay, how about this one? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the water of the baptism. I changed that a little bit. There is power in the tub. There, would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the tub, power in the tub. Does the does water wash away your sins? Where, what does baptism do? Now, the Catholic priests think it does. And they even baptize babies. Is baptizing babies biblical? They call that a baptism. Now, some of them pour water on with a wooden spoon. Some of them say, oh, no, it has to be a glass pitcher to pour the water on. Some say, oh, no, it's got to be a seashell. You pour the water on with a seashell. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says this sacrament, <clears throat> baptism, is also called the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So the baby is getting saved when he gets the water poured on his head. This is the teaching. I'm just telling you what they believe. It signifies and actually brings about the birth of water and the Spirit, without which no one can enter the kingdom of God. So pouring water on the baby's head gets them born again, according to the Catholics. Christopher Walsh comments, the Second Vatican Council reaffirms the traditional understanding of Christian initiation <clears throat> as a unity and a process. It is not something achieved with a trickle of water one Sunday afternoon, but a progressive entry into a commitment and a relationship. Becoming a Christian is a conversion, a growing adherence to Christ in faith and sacrament over an extended period of time. Does it take an extended period of time to become a Christian? Well, let me ask you, does it take an extended period of time to get born in the human world? Does it take weeks or months or just maybe a couple hours? Wow. Yeah, not weeks or months or years. Hmm. So what about the guys that dress up with the fancy robes and the funny hats and we carry the funny stick around? Orthodox priests believe baptism saves the child. Is it biblical? Greek Orthodox. They dip them into the water, though. They don't pour water on the head. See, pouring water doesn't save them. You have to dip them by the Greek Orthodox, okay? Georgian Orthodox, baptize. That kid looks excited. <laughs> Russian Orthodox preachers, a priest, baptize babies. Is this biblical? Well, let's see. Lutherans, I was raised Lutheran. I got baptized as a baby. I guess you call it baptism. Then we changed to Methodist. And I got baptized again as a Methodist. The Lutherans baptize babies. Is this biblical? Now, they pour the water on instead of dunk them, Okay. Anglican priests baptize babies. Talk about a fancy church building. Woo. The Anglicans baptize babies. Is this biblical? They pour the water on instead of dunk them. Okay? Anglican priests baptize the babies. Interesting. Methodist priests baptize the babies. And only there, they just dip their finger in the water and touch it to the forehead. So I don't know if it's the seashell or the jar or dunking them or the water or the pouring it on the head or just touch them with the water, but Methodist priests... Method will baptize babies. Is this biblical? The Episcopal priests will baptize babies. Is this biblical? 
A lot of different religions say they're baptizing babies. Let's see. Major denominations that teach baptism will save you. The Roman Catholic. You know why the Catholic priests are glad Jesus was crucified instead of stoned to death? Did I tell you about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, Jesus was crucified, and it's a good thing because the priest goes like this all the time. He, if he'd have been stoned to death, it'd be like this all the time. So just a little bit of trivia. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, Lutheran, Anglican, Methodist, Reformed Tradition, Latter-day Saint, the Mormon. So what must I do to be saved? It's very simple. <clears throat> What does a person have to do to go to heaven? Yeah, The jailer asked the guys this question in Acts chapter 16. <clears throat> guys, what do I have to do to be saved? They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Salvation is by believing, not baptism. Well, let's study this for a minute. In Romans 1, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to everyone that is baptized. No, I'm sorry. Uh, to everyone that believeth. Right? So the salvation comes when you believe, not when you get baptized. Okay? Acts chapter 2. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Oh, Peter's preaching to him. You know, the big crowd gathered around because they heard him all speaking with other languages. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, <clears throat> Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Those who believe that baptism saves you, this is their favorite verse. This is the one they always use. Hovind, can't you see the Bible says you get baptized for the remission of sins? Well, guys, you need to take a class in English, okay? The word for, you can look it up, dictionary.com, has nearly 40 different meanings. Just that three-letter word, for. It can mean with the object or purpose of. You run for exercise. And you can read for yourself. It's sometimes used as a preposition. You can read all the different meanings of the word for. Good luck studying that. It goes forever. It's also used as a conjunction. Seeing that, or since, or because. You get baptized because your sins are forgiven. You get baptized seeing that your sins are forgiven. You get baptized as a public symbol. Now, you got to look at all Scripture has to blend together. So if you see one verse that you say, I'm not sure what this means, read all the other verses on that topic, and it'll come together. So he said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. So what does that word for mean? Church of Christ, they say, oh, see, that means that's how you get your sins forgiven. Oh, really? <clears throat> Could it be you re get baptized because your sins are give, you're forgiven? Let's see. Teenage sentenced to 10 to, teenager sent 10 to 20 years for plot to kill family. Did they send this teenager to school to learn how to kill the family? Or because they already did kill the family? Is the word for in that sentence mean because of something that's already in the past? Obviously, right? Teen sentenced to prison for murder plot. They don't send them there to learn how to do the murder. They send them there because they did the murder. Rapper, take key, sentenced to 55 years in prison for murder. Is he going there to learn how to murder this guy or because he already did murder the guy? Already did, right? Can you get in life prison for, can you get in life prison for weed? Do they send them to prison to, that's a bad example, because some of them do learn a lot about drugs while they're in prison. Okay, you, Can you get life in prison for weed? We got weeds all over the property. Come mow them, please. Okay. okay. Michael Adler just settled a divorce over visitation of a neither may teach it negative phrases the other. They, the parrot. It should have been parrot. They, were, they had a parrot, and when they sent the parrot home with the woman, she would teach it that the man is a jerk. And when the man got the parrot, they had visitation rights for the parrot. He said, I went to law school for this. Now, wait, wait, wait. For. What does for mean? How about cry for me? How about this house is for sale? That word for is the tricky one. Toys for tots. You got to watch what, what are they meaning when they use this word. Can, you can use for to mean because. For has 37 different meanings. Yes. And it's often used because. Then Peter said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. 
The only way this fits all the other scriptures, which I'll show you, is to interpret that to me. You should get baptized because your sins are forgiven. Yeah, it's the only way that fits. What must I do to be saved? Does baptism play any part in our salvation? Does the water wash away your sins? Well, mosquitoes hatch straight out of the water. Tadpoles hatch straight out of the water. Some crazy religions teach Christians are made straight out of the water. By the water. You go down a sinner, you come up a saint. That water did it. Well, what if somebody else gets baptized without changing the water? What if they baptize four or five in a row in the same water? Whoa, how many sins are in there? Man. And what does a sewer company do with them? I wonder. I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> Peter said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. In Matthew 3, John the Baptist, by the way, it was not John the Methodist or John the Lutheran or John the Whiskey Pillion. I baptize you with water. John said, I baptize you unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So that you can get baptized with water or baptized with the Holy Ghost. Could that be the problem here? They're looking at the wrong baptism. Hmm. Well, I ha indeed have baptized you with water with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, Mark chapter 1. Mm. Must be important. This distinction here. Luke chapter 3. <clears throat> John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one cometh after me, I'm not, I'm not worthy to lose his shoes, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. You can be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Could that be what it's talking about for salvation? Interesting. I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water... The same said to me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, remaining in him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. So you guys who believe, you uh, Campbellites, who believe that the water is what washes away your sins, I think you better be prepared to answer all the different verses on this and stop just believing it because somebody with a fancy coat on told you it's true. The promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The finishing of Acts 2. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. So in Acts chapter 2, they received the word. At that moment, they got saved. Then they went and got baptized. The baptism didn't save them. Receiving the Lord saved them. I'll show you. Second Peter chapter 2, <clears throat> chapter 1 knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. You got, don't take one verse here and one verse there and try to make it say something. One guy was um, despondent, going to commit suicide. He said, I, I'm going to kill myself. But first, I'm going to see what the Bible says. He opened up his Bible randomly, and it says, Judas went out and hanged himself. So let me try this one more time. Go you therefore and do likewise. Oh, let me try <laughs> What thou doest, do it quickly. I believe you could put together phrases here and there and make it say about anything, couldn't you? <laughs> Read it in context, okay? For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Okay. <clears throat> the word of God, the Holy Ghost, teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Hmm. Which things we also speak, not in the words of man's wisdom, but which the Holy Ghost, comparing spiritual things with spirit. You better compare all the different scriptures on a topic before you decide what you believe. And since we're talking about Bible doctrine here, why I'm not one of these, let's look at the verses. 30 Bible verses or on comparison, how you should compare different topics. The Bible tells us, compare scripture with scripture. Matthew 9. When Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. I am not come to call right the call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mark chapter 1. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So what is it that gets your sins remitted? Is it the water or the repentance? Mark chapter 1. And saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye and believe the gospel. Mark 1.15. When Jesus heard it, he said unto them, They that are whole have no need of, a of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Oh, interesting. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Oh, the Church of Christ loved this verse too. See, Hoven, you have to be baptized. Well, what's the rest of it say? 
He that believeth not shall be damned. Why doesn't it say he that is baptized not shall be damned? Doesn't say that, does it? So in order to properly interpret that verse, we'd have to say, well, the baptism is a sign that you've accepted Christ, but that's not how you go to heaven. He that believeth not shall be damned. See, if I said, kids, sit down, buckle up, shut up, and hold on. We're going to the store. What if the kid says, well, I'm going to get in, but I'm not going to sit down, and I'm not going to buckle up, and I'm not going to shut up? Guess what? You're still going to the store. If you're in the car, you're going to the store, right? I say unto you, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Luke chapter 24. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in the name of all nations beginning at Jerusalem. What brings your salvation? Repentance. You turn. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Would you save me? It's not baptism. Romans 10. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why isn't baptism in there? If baptism was part of salvation, it should be where every time salvation is mentioned. It wouldn't be right to have it only in two places and not in 60 others. Hmm. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe if they haven't heard? They got to hear it, believe it, repent, and accept it. Simple. If baptism was an essential part of salvation, it should be mentioned. Every place salvation is mentioned, and it is not. The baptism referred to that takes away sin could be referring to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's mentioned three times. All believers get that, by the way. If you got saved, you got baptized with the Holy Spirit. You don't have to jibber-jabber, run around, like bark like a dog, or climb trees or anything else. You, you, the Spirit is what washes away your sins. The simple, straightforward interpretation makes all scriptures blend perfectly. Baptism is not part of salvation. Jesus never baptized anyone. Think about it. Romans 10, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Wait, wait, wait. Where's baptism in there? There's no baptism in that verse, is there? Romans 10. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Where's baptism in that verse? Grace are you saved through faith, huh? And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's no baptism in that verse. Hmm. Romans 10, 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. No baptism there. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. No baptism in that verse. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. No baptism there. You just receive him. Corinthians, I thank God that I baptized none of you. Now, why would Paul say such a thing to a church that he helped start? He said, I'm glad I didn't baptize any of you. He said, well, wait a minute. I might have baptized two guys, Stephanus and somebody else, as he's thinking back on it. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. You mean baptism is not part of the gospel? That's correct. That's your first stage of your growth after you receive the gospel. If, so baptism is not part of the gospel. It is the first step of obedience and a sign to the world that you decided to follow Jesus. You get married, you put on a ring. That doesn't make you married. If you take it off, you're still married. If somebody else puts it on, it doesn't make them married. It's a symbol. That's all it is. Public symbol. 1 Corinthians 4. In Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Hmm. 1 Corinthians 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein ye stand, by which ye are saved. How do we get saved? Through the gospel, not through the tub. I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Baptism is not part of the gospel. Neither is reading your Bible. That's part of your growth. It's a step of obedience and a sign. Romans 9. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed, not, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. What happened? 
The Gentiles sought to become righteous before God, have their sins forgiven, and they got it. But the Jews didn't get it. Why? Wherefore? <clears throat> because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. If you're seeking to become right with God because of your works, you're not going to get it. And that's what baptism is. They think that tub's going to wash away their sin. Galatians 2. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Couldn't be more clear. Titus chapter 3. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done. How do you get saved? It's not by your righteousness, that's for sure. But according to his mercy, he saved us. Titus 3, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Hebrews 11, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not, yet, not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. So wait a minute. Noah saved his household. What does that word saved mean? By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Noah being warned of God, he saved his house. He saved him from drowning. That's not saving him so they can go to heaven. <laughs> He's saving him from drowning. God says, Noah, build a boat. Yes, sir, Lord. I debated huge loss. Hugh Ross, I mean. And he said, that was just a local flood in the days of Noah. I said, God told Noah to build a boat 500 feet long. Why? He said that was his platform to preach from. That's what you get to get, watch the debate in my debate series. I said, Dr. Ross, if it's just a local flood, why didn't he say, Noah, move? How far could you move in 100 years? You had 100 years warning. I'd say you could move around the world a couple times, couldn't you? No, it was, a, it was not a local flood. It was a worldwide flood. Anyway, so he saved him from drowning, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water, saved from drowning and saved from the wicked world. That water separated them from that old world. That's not like salvation by, that's not talking about going to heaven. The like figure, it's a symbol, it's a figure whereunto baptism doth also now save us. The same way that water saved Noah, baptism saves us. It's a sign of our separation. That's all. It doesn't save you. Baptism is a figure. Acts 10. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost? Wait a minute. These people already got saved, already got the Holy Ghost, and now they say, can we baptize them? If baptism is part of salvation, the first part, this part shouldn't happen in that order, should it? Interesting. 2 Peter 3, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God doesn't want anybody to perish. He wants everybody saved. And we'll do the Calvinism somewhere here soon. God wants everybody saved, not an elect few. We'll talk about that. Almost had that ready for this morning. I do have to sleep once in a while. So God is not willing that any should perish. Here's what happened. First, you hear the gospel, you believe it, and you repent, and you accept God's gift. At that moment, you're saved. The next four, baptism, growing in grace, winning others, doing good works, that's because you're saved, not to be saved. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. How do you become a son of God? Receive him. Here's the gift. You want it? Yeah, okay. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, nor of baptism. I added that, uh, but of God. So it's very simple. The first four bring salvation. The next five, four, five through eight are just simply signs that you are saved, and that's how you grow. It's not how you get into the kingdom, through the water. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. God promised he would keep his words. And I think if you just simply read the book without anybody telling you what it says, just read it. When you're done, read it again. When you're done, read it again. Pretty soon it'll all coalesce in your mind and say, oh, that's what this book teaches. See, the Bible is the anvil that has worn out many hammers. 
It's the anvil that wears out the hammer, not the hammer that wears out the anvil. This anvil has ruined many, many false religions have been exposed by this book. Oh, you really believe that? What's this say right here? Oh, okay. This is right. If it teaches something other than this, it's wrong. Very simple. So I'm not Church of Christ. I'm not charismatic, Catholic, Orthodox, Lutheran, Anglican. They teach that water baptism is part of salvation. I don't believe any of that. Now, they might be right on a thousand other things, okay? I could probably agree with them on which side of the road we drive on. I bet we could agree on that. I bet we could find a lot of things we agree on. But this one is, to me, it's very essential. How do you get saved? By grace are you saved. Through faith. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. All you would do then is boast about it. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Why did Cain kill Abel? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Now hold it. Cain's works were evil? What was it Cain did? Genesis chapter 4. He brought an offering to the Lord. He brought a bunch of fruit and vegetables, didn't he? God said that was evil. Whoa. His own works were evil. And his brother's righteous. What did his brother do? His brother brought a lamb. When Adam and Eve sinned, they realized, oh, no. We were naked. We've disobeyed God's laws. They made aprons out of fig leaves. God said, sorry, that doesn't do. It. Something's got to die. And he made them coats out of skins. Some kind of innocent animal died for their sin. Starts right in the first couple chapters of the Bible teaching the two different religions of the world, Cain and Abel. Abel said, I can only be righteous if I bring an innocent substitute. Lord, would, would you take this lamb and put my sins on this lamb? And he killed the lamb and offered it up for a sacrifice. Jesus Christ took our sins on him. He was offered up for a sacrifice. Now your sins can be forgiven. Amen. Not by bringing a banana to God. But you read Genesis 4, and what happened? When Cain brought his fruit and vegetables, Abel brought a lamb, God would not take Cain's offering. And Cain got mad about it and killed his brother. People will hate me because of this broadcast. Because I teach salvation is, is free, simple. Paid for. Jesus paid for it. You don't have to work for it. Now, if you're one of those churches that likes to have all the parents and grandparents come in to watch the baby get baptized because you know they're going to you know, drop something in the offering plate. Mm -hmm. I feel sorry for you, Judgment Day. So I'm not Church of Christ, Catholic, or Orthodox, Lutheran, Anglican, Methodist, Episcopal. I think it is evil to trust something we do to get to heaven. It's a gift. All right. Any questions or comments, or else we're going to go get some food. Yes, yes. Comment, uh, I was born and raised in uh, Catholic. And, uh, what they teach you is that uh, baptism is actually uh, at that age is basically washing away the sin brought from your parents. You were raised Catholic. I'll repeat it so they can hear it. So they're saying the baptism washes away the sins from the parents. Right. So, which is coming from my knee. The yeah. Natural sin. That's what they call. It. Can the baptism wash away anything except maybe some dirt on your body? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I grew up in an Orthodox Christian. Russian Orthodox, right? And they teach that if you don't get that, that's in their church. Yeah, it's got to be their water, not 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 uh, Anglican water. It's got to be Russian Orthodox water. Oh yeah, special water. Yeah. yeah. Which I bet they charge money for. Okay. Yes, sir. Is unbelief a sin? I think all of us are born in unbelief. Some simply because they've never heard. As soon as they hear, it's like, wow, I believe that. Some, when they hear, they say, no, I don't believe that. What you do when you hear it is determined. That's the reaction. That's where the switch gets The only sin flipped. that puts you in hell is unbelief. What now? The only sin that puts you in hell is unbelief. Yeah. See, baptism is a work that we do. It's not part of your salvation. It's part of your growth. Getting born into your mom and dad's family does not happen because you learned how to ride a bicycle. That happens later. Okay? <laughs> that's part of your growth. Gee whiz. All right. Thank you. Any comments I need to mention here, Steve? No. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, come with us to get some lunch. Bye. See you tomorrow.